Hello and welcome to Bend the Knee, a Song of Ice and Fire podcast. I am Sir Matt the Bud Knight. Joining me today is Lady Teresa. How are we doing today? Just lovely. Just lovely. And we are here for Mead, Meat, and Cheese. Uh, we've been talking about it on the podcast, and we're going to go through the Song of Ice and Fire, uh, Feast of Ice and Fire cookbook uh, here, which is the um, official Game of Thrones cookbook. It uses a lot of recipes, um, items that are actually described in the book, in the chapters, in the in the, in the pages. They say that they'll tell you lines where it's read out. Um, Ez and I have done, uh, Sir Ezra and I have done some of these on uh, the Patreon. Uh, but now we're going to start doing some of these here on YouTube so we can show you guys. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, and today we're doing a bowl of brown, which I th we felt was the, uh, the, mo the, the most obvious place uh, to start. So. All right, so uh, these are the ingredients we have for this today. Um, you know, with uh, everything that's going on outside in the world right now, you can't even buy uh, toilet paper, let alone uh, certain cuts of meat. And unfortunately, we're kind of limited at our Fred Meyers right now. So uh, what do we have here today? So we got some beef ribs. Those were easy to find. Our Fred Meyer only limited. You could only buy two pieces of meat here. Um, so instead of going for a top round, which they were out of, I just did a chuck roast because I wanted some more quantity since this is kind of what Matt and I will be eating this week. And then I have a Cornish, ga Cornish game hen that's thawed out. Those usually come in the frozen section. These are some pearl onions that I happen to have because the frozen vegetables are definitely gone. This is some um, dark beer, um, pretty limited selection on the dark beer situation. This is like a fancy drought stuff. It has like something in the can. I don't know how that works yet. Not my preference, but we'll give it a go. Some beef broth. I did three apples because these ones are kind of small. Um, another onion because I didn't think that was enough. And then I did get some barley, which was surprising because like rice and pasta was pretty much gone. Bob's Red Mill is a local company from here in Milwaukee, Oregon, where we live, and they happen to have a thing of barley. And then uh, the carrots were also slightly decimated, so we have some baby carrots, and then I bought just some brown crusty bread to hopefully go with it. Garlic is not on the ingredients list, but as there's um, a health situation going on, I'm going to put some garlic in it <laughs> to hopefully improve some immunity purposes. Perfect. All right. Yeah, and it does call for, um, I guess, the, the the real way you'd want to do this would be to, you know, think like, you know, if you're thinking of Game of Thrones, you're thinking a big cast iron pot, uh, and you could do this in a pot all, all day if that's what you wanted. We did find another YouTuber, uh, and I'll put a link in the episode because I'm blanking on his name right now, but he used an instant pot, which is what we are going to be... Uh, using today is, is 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 that's how we're going to be doing it is our is our instant pot so rather than taking 12 hours uh, it'll take one so that's what we're gonna do today so i only did two apples because it just kind of looks like a lot already and i guess i didn't want more apples than onion at least in my head that seems weird um because most soups start with like carrot onion and celery um so i'm gonna just see how all this biz goes and go from there. So this is technically like roughly a cup of pearl onions here, but like I said, they were frozen and I really like onions. So I'm going to cut up this guy to have some more fresh in there because I think it'll be better that way. I made the like poudre forte, which is a seasoning that's like, um, I can't remember if it's earlier or later in the book. But it, it smells like pumpkin pie. So that's a little bit odd. It called for like ginger cloves. Um, it called for mace, which is not commonly used right now. Um, but a substitute for mace is nutmeg. So 
basically we're gonna have a stew that smells like pumpkin pie um but whatever that, you know i like pumpkin pie so yeah. Yeah, let's see. It's in the book here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. Black pepper, cinnamon, mace, ginger, uh, ground cloves, and long pepper. Yeah, so again, you can see where that comes from. You know, that comes from a 14th century a 14th century cookbook. A lot of these recipes are uh, come from, I mean, you know, they're said in the book at some point, and so then uh, in this cookbook they try to use real-life stuff uh, that was used back then, and then they also... And a lot of the recipes provide a modern version that you could do today. So, you know, you don't have to go out and actually kill a goat or something. You know, you can find some sort of a substitute. So these are the beef ribs. I'm just going to sear them on the saute mode of the Instapot. And I'm going to leave them whole and hope that's cool. This monster, I'm definitely going to cut up. Um, I'll probably cut it like in half so it's not super thick, I think. And then just chop it into chunks so that way it actually cooks down a little bit. Um, and then I think the Cornish game head, like I think I might just go in whole. <laughs> I guess I could like I could like um, crack it in the back so it kind of fillets a little bit, um, just to make sure. Like I mean, you just want it cooked all the way through, which like an hour in the pressure cooker, like I said, is like I don't know what the math is, but it's a lot. So right. I think it should be fine because it'd be like slow cooking it for several, several hours. So I guess I'm going to attack this hunk of meat now. Maybe just some more of this first. Um, if there's like a butcher out there watching or something, I'm sorry if I'm like offending your craft right now. So I don't usually work with these big hunks of meat um so there's this fat on it which you could cut off but i don't recommend it because it's what gives it the flavor so i i mean you might get some chewy meat but i'd say that like cooking the soup with that in it is more important the thing that's just chewiest is going to be this like um spine through the middle of this like whatever freaking chuck roast i got here. Right. So I might try to cut around that because that'll be the chewy part. The fat would hopefully dissolve. Um, so anyways, we're just going to give it a whirl. Get rid of those. And let's cut off part of this. And then actually I just have like a... A uh, sack full of stuff I use for broth in my freezer. So that, like, scraps and stuff will just go in there. And then these, I mean, I don't want them too small. I don't want them to get lost in the soup. I want to be able to, like, eat a chunk of meat. Um, so, I don't know, that might be too fat. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do, like, you know, thumb-ish sized pieces. This is a little bit more than an inch. Um, and that one's kind of huge, but whatever okay, and this um thought out for two days um because we were lazy yesterday and didn't do this then um so yeah it's just a, a, a little bird it's a little um more gamey i think than a chicken is um so this guy i don't know he's kind of big i feel like I could break it down and that would be okay. So, I'm feeling for my, I don't know, I think it might be cooler if it's bigger. If it's Let's full. just throw it in. Let's throw just throw it in. in. That's what they would do. We're not gonna gonna break it down. Okay. All right. All right, these are the pearl onions. They're a little mushy. We're <laughs> also a little bit wet. That's why it's super spitty. I have more onions, so I'm just going to cool off the pot a little bit so it doesn't get me. Alright, so yeah, so the onions have too much water in them because they were frozen. But I'm going to let those soften and even, well I guess not soften, but I'm going to let those brown like quite a bit to get a little bit of um, like caramelization and then a little bit of that like crud on the bottom of the pan because that's the good stuff. So. Okay, so the onions are pretty soft. I did turn up the Instapot to 
more saute. Um, I guess if you hit saute and hit adjust, it does crank it up a little bit because my onions are wet. So I'm gonna try to like relatively brown these on both sides. I guess if I had done this in another pot, it'd be easier. I can tell, I don't think it's hot enough, but we're gonna give it a go because if we could brown this, it'll make it darker and more flavorful. And we'll probably just do two at a time here um, to try to brown these beef ribs a little bit more. Like these are like over an inch fat. So, so three to five minutes. Three to five minutes on each side. Um, flip once. And I'm probably, these ones that are in here because the space is small, I'm probably gonna take them out and then put them and like switch them out and right. put them back in. And then the other chopped meat that we have, I'm just gonna like toss it in. Like I'm not gonna. Right brown and all the pieces and, of it and we're dealing with limited size here so we will so we may want to have it cooked down a little bit and also order to try and get it all to fit in right so that's like what we could put in there i don't know if that's what will go in um i imagine that this chopped like roast i have i just chopped all of it because we'll eat it in other things but i don't i know if that'll all fit or if we really want that much bowl of brown going on maybe we do I don't know. Um, so yeah, so first I'm gonna brown at least these guys to give it uh, just kind of a darker color and more flavor. So I browned these puppies and now I'm like, do I take them out? I think it's time like all the shit just goes in the pot. Um, so I'm gonna dump the carrots in. They're really small, so I'm not worried about them like cooking, you know, they're gonna be mush basically. So I'm gonna put these ribs back in. They like browned, like, I don't know. I mean, a little bit, why not? Um, okay, so that's in there. And then I'm gonna, just gonna open a beer, you know? <laughs> We're just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna, all right. So I'm essentially deglazing the pan with this beer. It's gonna be very fragrantly Guinnessy in here. I think we're gonna dump it all except for a sip because um, that's more than a sip. I don't really want more than that. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a Guinness. I mean, it's pretty dark. It doesn't taste, this one doesn't taste super dark. I've definitely tasted Guinness that tastes darker. And then I don't understand what's in the can. What do you mean there's something in the can? There's something in the can. This fancy, like, Drought or something. I don't know. Somebody leave us a comment. And I don't know either. Tell us what we're, what we're doing wrong here. I'm gonna just, you know, I'm not gonna, not gonna waste it. I mean. Okay, so now that's in there. Um, kind of was rushed there just because the pot was getting too hot and I don't want to like turn the onions into mush. So now I have these gross beer hands. Um, so we have like, this is our seasoning area, um, except for my wine. So this is that Poudre Forte, and I can tell you what was in it. Black pepper, ground cinnamon, mace was replaced with nutmeg, ginger, cloves, and then long pepper or grains of paradise. Who knows what that is? Um, hence it's not in there. So it said do two teaspoons of that concoction, which I don't think is very much considering the like for five pounds of meat, you should do more than two teaspoons of seasoning or it's gonna taste like nothing. So, I, I don't know, I'm just gonna go with what I- Maybe they went with, maybe they went with two because if you like, is probably more realistically what they had because spice, spices right. back then would have so been relatively just, expensive. You know, but we don't need it to taste like shit. Um, they also no. said a <laughs> tablespoon of salt, which I'm not gonna do because we don't need heart failure here tonight. Um, I might do two teaspoons though, because it is a lot of quantity, but that's like more than enough tablespoon. It's like not happening. Um, okay, now I'm getting nervous. What am I forgetting? Well, the, do we put in the apples and stuff now and the rest of the meat? Yeah, so I'm worried that in the Instant Pot that the barley and the apples are just gonna like turn to mush. So you wanna put that um, in towards the end? So I kind of want to put them in like later, but I also want to be done cooking and just sit on the couch and veg for the rest of the night. Um, so I guess we're just going to dump it all in there and just see what happens. The guy on the one YouTube video that we found that we watched, he just dumped everything in there. I left it for 90 minutes, which is a little bit long for me. He had a lot more meat, I think. So um, I think I'm going to do an hour in the Instant Pot. That already seems like a lot to me, but maybe not. 
All right, that felt good. Um, here's the barley. This is one cup of barley. I pre-measured it in there. Not that I super care about measurements, obviously. But why not? Looks all right. Who wants any more? Um, I thought we weren't gonna have barley, so I was gonna put uh, quinoa in. So I was like, well, it's old. <laughs> An older grain, <laughs> at least. Okay, so then I'm just like eyeballing that game hand over there. What do you think? Just throw it in. Just gonna. That's what we're supposed to do, right? Just plop it. I don't know. I'm gonna put some of this in there. This is just plain old beef broth. And then there is like a fill line yeah there sure is seems like we're really pretty close with that stupid bird yeah so we should probably just throw the bird on top and then i'm just gonna cram in there oh god it's a juicy little sucker all right not dripping on the floor okay okay all right bird idiot Uh, right there, and then I gotta wash my hands because I got dirty chicken hands. So, um, the like last relative ingredient is like some flavoring, like Worcestershire or liquid smoke. I'm gonna do both because I have both and I like both. So, I'm gonna do like you know a really scientific amount there. Um, and then liquid smoke is like super strong, so yeah, you only use like a tiny <laughs> freaking bit, or it will not be okay. Um, I think that when I do like two pounds of Kahlua pork, it calls for like a teaspoon. It's like a stupid. Like that is honestly. Huh? Is that how thin it is normally? Yeah. Is this too old? I don't know. I mean, it smells delicious, so it's going to be fine. So. Yeah, you do want to be really careful with liquid like, smoke because uh, if, you, if you go over, it's really overbearing. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. So I'm going to fill with broth to the fill line. We got our little chicken there. Our little game hen, Craig. How about Craig? Hang in there, buddy. We're going to cook you upright and eat you later. Do we have everything? I think that's it. Should we read the recipe again? Just, is everything off the counter? How about that? Yes. Everything's empty except for that meat, which just seemed like a lot. So... I'm just gonna go for it. Set it to ceiling. Um, turn it off, saute. And then I don't use any of these buttons. I just go to manual because I don't know how to do things. Um, and we're gonna go up to 90, which I think if you go down to 90, it's faster. But I don't know, that's what the guy said in the video, and then it took like a I don't know, longer. I think it's the same amount of time. Um, oh wait, are we doing, we're not doing 90. We're going to do, how about we in the middle? How about 75? Perfect. Okay. 75. Now I can drink and snack till then. So we did, um, 75 minutes, which should be plenty-ish, hopefully. Um, just gonna unseal it. It's a safety activity. <laughs> All right, we are ready for the uh, reveal. Here we go. Let's... Ta -da. So I deboned the Cornish game hen as best I could and then put it back in. There's a lot of super tiny bones. If I was cooking this for like people besides Sir Matt and I, I would warn them. To like, <laughs> don't choke on a tiny Gornish game hen bone. Um, I pulled off like the top fat, like I just skimmed it with a spoon. I have this like fancy Goodwill gravy item, uh, but you could just put it into like a cup or something would be fine. Cause I'm not even going to pour it back in because it's a lot. It's all of that really delicious ghee that we put in, which is totally fine. It cooked into everything and it should make it all really good. It's pretty hearty. Um, I'd say that we put in three or four pounds of meat. And yeah. for this size um, Instant Pot, that's like 
is not soup I would make. I would have done the beef ribs and the Cornish game hen and like called it quits because it's already a lot going on here. I could try to like cut it with some broth to like eat it, but we're just gonna go for it. Yeah. Because we're hungry. And we, and we did do a little bit of bread here. Did some bread with the ranch ghee from. Um, yeah, from churn ghee. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. So. We're just gonna serve her up here. Um, I feel like I should show them like the bone dish. Yeah. Um, so this is like the bone and some of the like fat dish that I pulled out that Matt will probably eat later when yep. I'm not looking. Yep. Um hundred <laughs> percent. But yeah, so these are the spare ribs and then these are from the Cornish game hen, but like, you know, like these are tiny little bones. Yeah. So, so just be careful and like here's the wishbone. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> so, warning, don't choke. Um, yeah. Are you just going for it? Jeez. Oh, you're going to... Well, I guess we'll do it. You put some soup in there first. Jeez. See, that one's got a big piece of fat. Well, I guess I could give that to you because I don't want a big chunk of gristle. You can definitely smell the apples, which you is... Can, well, you can smell the apples. You can smell the nutmeg and the cloves and the, like pumpkin pie yeah definitely the the like the that's the first thing i kind of noticed when i opened up was the smell of the apples which i was like oh that is weird that i think that that would be the you know what you get aroma. but yeah so it smells good i mean it's it's an odd combination but it, it does it does smell good smells good the barley looks good that was cooked in here um yeah. I think this would be good for breakfast with like a poached egg on top. It's like right up my alley. Yeah. Um, so. But now I'm ready to like, you know, chow down. But it's really good. I put a little bit more salt in because before I was skimpy, skimpy because yeah. I can always up it. And then I put more black pepper. I still think it's kind of bland. I still would have put... I don't know. I guess I just want to like crack some black pepper on it, and then I'm yeah. gonna be happy with it. Okay. Is all it really needs. You know, I it's think. Not that hot. Just go for it. You're just gonna chop it down. You're just gonna like. Yeah, it. it's very. It's stew. It's just. It's just it's, beef stew. It's 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 beef stew. Um, again, you know, we're using higher quality meat than you know you would in like the show, or even probably. You know, this stuff being taken from more medieval, you know, uh, you know, European type uh, recipes, uh, you know, they probably instead of using, you know, good beef and stuff like that. I mean, in, in the show, I th in, the, in the book, I think more what they're referring to is like King's Landing is think more like rats and possibly dog or cat. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, since we're not using rat dogs and cats, I think it, uh, it's pretty good. So. I um recommend and uh, yeah so all right guys thanks for joining us hope you've had fun and remember that winter is coming. <laughs>